On today's episode, we're taking this photo of an old car and we'll turn it into this vintage photo of an old car. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I love old cars, and uh, I don't know what kind of car this is. If you do, let me know in the uh, description below. But I thought, hey, why not take this old car image and turn it into a vintage old car photo? So that's what we're going to do today. Using Topaz uh, Studio 2, we're going to use Topaz Adjust AI and Photoshop. We're going to have a lot of fun, so... Let's get started. By the way, you can download this image. I provided a link in the uh, description below. You can go ahead and download it and follow along with me. We're going to eventually crop this image, but not yet. First thing I want to do is duplicate the background uh, layer. I'm just going to use Tony's action here to do it. Uh, just click this button right here, duplicates the background layer. Or you could do Command or Control J. You all know that stuff, but I love the actions. They're fun and easy. So we're going to come up here to Filter, and then we're going to come to Topaz Labs, and I'm going to launch Adjust AI, and we're going to use some presets there. Well, actually, just one preset. We're going to come up here to the presets. I don't use these a whole lot, but I thought today I would use them. It takes a second or two for this thing to fill itself in, okay? And I was thinking, you know, black and white, black and white, I always like to use a lot of detail in my black and white images. So Topaz Adjust AI, a great way of adding detail. We're in the featured category. Let's try a few of these different ones on for size. And I like the detail here. That was good. And dark mood. And then there was one called daylight. And I think I used this guy right here, bright and detailed. Yeah. And then I come right here, see these icons, click this, and this will take you over to the adjustments. Okay, and you'll notice that the uh, strength here is pulled back. Let's see what happens if we pull our strength the whole way up. Oh, I, I do like that. I'm going to leave that up the whole way there. And basically, we're adding some nice uh, detail here through the preset, small detail, medium. And that's looking pretty good. Let me see what happens if I give it a little more small detail, maybe a little bit. And medium detail, they're not really using anything on medium detail. I'm just going to add a little bit of extra medium detail. And I really recommend when you use a preset, don't just settle on it. You know, if you can uh, improve upon it, go ahead and do that. And that looks pretty good. I don't want to waste too much time in here. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is, and this isn't going to really matter because I'm going to turn this into a black and white image, but it's a little on the blue side up in the uh, lighter areas. So I think I'll just take the temperature and move this to the right a little bit, just to add a little bit of warmth, just to get some of that coolness out of it. Well, I think we're off to a pretty good start. What do you think? I'm going to go ahead and click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now let's turn this into a black and white photo. Uh, a couple of videos back, I did a video showing you how to use the TK7 Go panel to make a really great black and white conversion. Now there's many different ways of doing black and white conversions in Photoshop. Tony's panel, uh, you can use Silver Effects Pro, but today we're going to use a gradient map in Photoshop. And I mentioned that in that TK7 uh, video, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video today. The first thing I want to do is add a black and white adjustment here. Now, I'm not using this to turn my image into a black and white image. However, it is black and white right now, but watch when I change the blend mode to luminosity, it disregards the black and white look, and it doesn't really change the image at all. Watch, I'll shut it off and on. See, the image stays the same, but I'll show you how we can utilize these sliders after I add a gradient map. So this is pretty fun. Now watch this. This gives you a lot of nice uh, extra adjustment uh, capabilities. So now we're gonna come down and add a gradient map. Now when you wanna make sure you have this gradient map on, so you get a really beautiful black and white image, really nice blacks and really nice whites and all the tones in between, which is really nice. Now, if you don't have this, uh, this gradient here, you can click here and you can come in here to basics and inside of basics, you're gonna see these different swatches here. So make sure you have that swatch up and you have that guy right there, all right? And that makes your black and white image, but we're not done yet. Let's go to this black and white layer that we created. Let's click on it. And when we do that, a black and white adjustment comes up. Now, this is where it's really interesting. And we can get some really cool adjustments to our gradient map. Uh, but that luminosity blend mode is key. Make sure you put this layer in the luminosity blend mode. But now we have all these different adjustments here. So we can take these adjustments. Anything that's red, if we move this to the right, red things will get lighter. Move it to the left, they get darker. So you see these uh, inner tubes on top of this car here. 
So if I move this, or life preservers, whatever you want to call them, I can move this to the left and darken them up. Because what I'm doing here is I'm trying to add contrast. And I'll just take each one of these sliders. I'll move it to the left. Now here's yellows. I'll move it to the right. I'll move it to the left. See, I'm getting some nice contrast in the wheels and on the inner tubes or whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to move this to the right and add some contrast there. I'm just looking to add contrast. I don't know if there's much green. No, there's not really much green, if any, in there. Now, the cyans are interesting. If I move it to the right, I lighten them up. Move it to the left, I darken them. See, I can make that car really dark. Isn't that cool? I think I'm going to lighten it up, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to lighten it up to about here, and then I'm going to take these blues, because I know that car was blue. If I move this to the right, see, I'm, I'm killing my contrast, but watch this. I'm going to pull this to the left. Maybe the whole way to the left or pretty close to the whole way like that. And now I'm going to come back to my cyans. I'm using the cyans to adjust the lighter areas of the blue on the car. Just I'm just looking for that extra little bit of contrast. Maybe, oh, you know, I don't know. Maybe right there. I think that looks really good. And I don't think there's any magenta in here. No, there's no magenta. So that's pretty cool. So... Uh, if I shut this uh, layer off, you can see that's without that adjustment and that's with it. But remember that when that's gold, that's a really good tip for getting great black and whites using the gradient map. Now you could also substitute a hue saturation layer in there if you want to. Maybe I'll show you that on another video. I'll be sending this into Topaz Studio 2 shortly. So to do that, I need to pull all these layers together. So to do that, I'll call on my TK7 combo panel and click this button right here. Or that's also Shift Option Command or Control E to do that as well. Either way, it gets the job done, but I like the action. It's really quick. Before I send this into Studio 2, I need to crop it because I have all this negative space up here, which is just way too much white up there. I don't need all that, so we need to crop this. Let's grab our crop tool. And I think I want to do a 4x6 crop. And I'm already set on here. And if, if you come up to the menu and click here, here's all your different... Uh, options for cropping you know you can do free cropping whatever you need to do but i want to do uh a four by six crop so right now it's going two by three or four by six same thing so click right here and now here's our four by six uh crop and i'm just going to come and find the crop that i like and i think maybe maybe like right there Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And if you're happy with it, uh, you can just check this off here. Now you have a choice here, you can delete the crop pixels. And if you're gonna send it into uh, Topaz Studio 2, definitely delete those crop pixels, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click right here, and that sets our crop. And now we can send this into Topaz Studio 2. And let me go ahead and rename this. I'll just do TS2. That way we'll know what we're doing. In case you're wondering why I said delete the crop pixels, because if you don't delete them, when you send this image into Topaz Studio 2, it will send the image without the crop. So that's an important tip. So remember, if you're gonna send this image into Topaz Studio 2, go ahead and click that uh, delete crop pixels. It's very important. Let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2 and see what awaits us inside of its creative toolbox. What I wanna do here is add a texture for a border in this image, because I think I, you know, I have all this white around the car, but I'd like to, you know, like focus in on the car. And I think a border texture would be great for that. So let's go ahead and add filter and let's add a texture. Now I have a texture in mind and it's gonna be found in this borders group. And the borders group is cool because it already sets you up in the multiplied blend mode, opacities at 50%. And the border I'm looking for is called border fade. Uh, let's see, I could type it in the search field right here, but where is it? I may have to do that because may take me a while to, here it is right here, border fade one actually, this guy right here. And I like it, right away it looks really good. Now we have this edit uh, right here, so we can edit here, and it gives us a transform dialog that comes up here and we can adjust it, but I think it's good right where it is, so I don't have to really mess with that. Right there I think it's, it looks good, but let's see if we can play around with it a little bit. Now it has a slight yellowness to it. If you don't want that yellow on your black and white image, you can take this saturation and shut it off. And now we just have a solid black and white image. Great tools inside of this uh, texture filter. And so uh, do we want to uh, do anything else to it? Do I want to darken it at all? 
Maybe I'll just take the brightness back just slightly because I don't want these highlights to get overdone. Now that just tames those highlights back a little bit and I like that. And do we want to add any extra detail? We can bring up the grungy quality of that, but I don't think so. I'm going to leave it right around zero. I might just bring that up slightly just to add a little bit of extra texture on that border but that looks cool and i'm excited with that so here is the before texture and here's the after what do you think sometimes just that little bit of texture is all an image needs to take it over the top we've gone from a very nice black and white image of an old car to now a vintage image of an old car with the use of just one simple texture pretty cool now for a variation, if you wanted to, you can come up here to add filter. There's many different ways of adding a split tone to an image, but we can do it right here while we're in the creative toolbox and we could come down here to um, dual tone or you could do quad tone. For just a simple split tone, uh, dual tone is a split tone. So let's click it and I'll show you how this works. Let's say we wanted to add a simple sepia tone. So let's start out with our shadow color. You can start out with highlighter shadow, it doesn't matter or you can not use highlight or not use shadow. It's totally up to you, but let's go to shadow color. I'm going to start to pull the slider. And as I do to the right, two other sliders magically appear. Okay. Now they're, they're using the blue tint right now in the hue range here. So what I want to do is drag the hue into the yellowish areas, the sepia areas, somewhere right around there. And already that looks really nice. Now we could get away with just leaving it on the shadows if we wanted to. Now, here's a little tip for you. When a, when a photograph starts to age, the, the light areas start to tend to yellow out, okay? So if you don't want a aged look, you could leave the uh, sepia off the highlights, okay? And just let it attach itself to the shadows like I'm doing right here. And uh, then we have the shadow color uh, strength. We can pull it back a little bit. You know, I don't like to go too strong. I mean, you can go crazy with this stuff, but it's really up to you. It's your interpretation of the image. But I'm going for a vintage photo look, but maybe right around there. And I, I could say I'm done there, but let's see what happens if I add a little bit of highlight color to it. Two more sliders magically appear. I'm going to start to move this up to the right. But see that now? And this is already around that sepia range right here. And I think, let me just play with it right there now watch i can take this highlight color and start to move it more to the right it starts to take more of an aged look as i do that okay but i just i think i just want to add a hint of it in the highlights just a little wee bit something like that okay and then you have this balance it's going to balance between the shadows and the highlights here and you're just trying to strike that perfect balance on your image and i think right there looks good now here's another thing don't forget you also have an opacity slider here so you can take this opacity slider here and you could pull back if you wanted to, if you felt it was too strong. So I like to go more on the subtle side with my sepia tones, and I think right around there, but that has a nice vintage look to it. Now let me shut that layer off so you can see here's the before and here's the after. I like it, and I think I'm going to go with it. Okay, so we add that little bit of sepia tone, which adds to my vintage look, and I'm happy with that. But wait, there's more. What vintage photo doesn't want a little bit of film grain, right? You look at those old vintage photos, and they have some film grain, and we want this to look authentic. So guess what? We can come here to add filter, and we do have a film grain tool in Studio 2, and it's right here. And we have two different types of grain. We can do just a regular gray for, you know for your black and white images or a color for a color image so we're going to leave it on gray and we have a strength here we can pull up the strength and i hope you can see this we see a nice film grain coming here and then we have a size we can adjust the size so you can make it really large or not so large depending on what you want on your image i know some of you guys and gals out there don't like film grain but i'm a big fan of it let me know in the comment section if you like or dislike film grain whether that be in an old vintage photograph or just in a more modern photograph but grain for effect now, here's a randomizer. This is really nice, and I like to turn this up somewhat because it'll make those grains random, make them look more natural like you would see on film. And I think that little bit of film grain looks good. Now, here's before the film grain, and here's after. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really see that grain. All right, move it around here a little bit. So here's the before, 
and here's the after. But I think you'll agree that that really adds to our authentic vintage photograph. I believe I'm done, and I'm really happy with it. I like that little film grain. Again, let me know what you think about that in the comments section, if you like it or not. And if you're totally happy, remember, we started out in Photoshop. We did a gradient map on it and made a black and white conversion out of it. All we need to do now is come up here and click Accept, and we'll be sent right back into Photoshop. And now we're back in Photoshop. Let's go back and see where we started from. So let's go back to the original background layer. So I started out with this image of a car. I really like it, an old car in the snow. And it looks like they're out for a nice day of fun on the hills, sliding down the hills, okay? Sent it into Topaz Adjust AI and added some extra detail because I like a lot of detail in my black and whites. Warmed it up a little bit. And then we did a black and white conversion using the gradient map adjustment and the black and white adjustment in the luminosity blend road mode. Remember that trick and tip. And we ended up with this image right here, a really cool black and white image. Brought that all together in a stamp layer and sent that into Topaz Studio 2, the creative toolbox that I like to refer to it as, and ended up with this nice vintage old car photograph. There it is, and thanks for going on this ride with me. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was great turning this old car image into a vintage old car image. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber of my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.